Hi, my name is John Burleson from NUI Galway and you're welcome to this lecture series on electrical and electronic engineering. Um, today we're going to have a little look at, at some chips and um, in more detail at logic gates. So you might remember earlier on in the course we saw this. This is one of Intel's recent microprocessors codenamed Ivy Bridge. I said at the time that there was over a billion transistors on this um, chip and you might remember that in fact the height of this chip is about half the size of a euro cent coin. So a very, very small device, but packed with billions of transistors. In fact, computer chips like this and many others contain um, digital logic that performs some kind of operation um, that transforms basically uh, ones and zeros from one form to another. And this is done through the means of what are called logic gates. It doesn't matter whether it's a microprocessor in your computer or um, as this, this is a, an architecture diagram for a um, what's called a system on a chip um, from the company ARM. Um, they will all contain um, loads of um, logic gates performing logical operations. Um, this particular one shown here um, is from um, ARM. They are also responsible for the processors used in 95% of smartphones. And the system on a chip shown here basically not only contains a processor but also contains a variety of other um, digital systems that are contained in various computing devices. So you can see, for example, there's uh, different types of memory here. There's some uh, internet devices. Um, there's some, the, the main microprocessor itself, um, USB interfaces and so on. And basically all of these systems are um, embedded together onto um, a single chip to perform uh, multiple functions. And as I mentioned, each of those would contain um, variety of logic gates and in turn transistors which make those gates um, operate. Now logic comes back to a chap called George Boole. Boole was a Englishman who uh, found um, a number of um, applications for algebraic theory which were a little bit different from normal algebra. Normal algebra um, we're used to dealing with numbers. Um, Boole founded a new type of algebra called Boolean algebra which basically works with um, truth values, ones and zeros. He was a professor, in fact he was the first maths professor at University College Cork, our sister university in Cork, and he developed this theory of Boolean algebra in the mid-19th century. And as I mentioned, instead of working uh, as typical algebra does with um, a set of numbers, and algebra works basically with uh, true and false values, ones and zeros. And indeed he defined a number of um, operations which worked or performed um, um, operations on, on the, these ones and zeros, including the AND function, the OR function, and the NOT function. Now, it wasn't until much later on, in fact, um, 80 years later, that um, a researcher called Claude Shannon found that many of the applications of Boolean algebra could indeed be applied to electric circuits, or specifically to electric switches. He found, first of all, that um, Boolean algebra could be used to, um, to simplify these electric circuits and he also found that um, electric circuits can be used, could be used to solve um, Boolean algebraic expressions. And um, he actually he wrote um, a master thesis on this topic um, which is known by some as being the most important uh, master thesis of all time because it's actually the, the foundation on which digital logic and digital systems, in fact many modern uh, computer systems are based, that Boolean algebra could be realized using electronic circuits. And uh, he basically devised a way that we could uh, design digital circuits um, by this Boolean algebraic means using a series of logic gates. Um, we mentioned earlier on that uh, Boole's algebra, algebra basically relied on ones and zeros, trues and falses. And in voltages for electric circuits, we basically, re basically rep re represent these trues and falses by high voltages and by low voltages respectively. So a one or a true value is represented by a high voltage and a zero or a false value is represented by a low voltage. Um, Shannon has many other um, discoveries um, from uh, uh, code breaking during the war to uh, information theory. And, um, but in, in our context, I think this discovery that um, electric circuits could be um, solved and simulated using Boolean algebra was, was, um, was the most important. So what's a logic gate? Well, a logic gate basically is a physical device that implements some kind of Boolean algebraic function. 
I mentioned and and or are not, but in fact there's a wider range of logic that we'll see later on that basically can be implemented using a, a physical logic gate. So what happens is um, one of these logic gates will basically have a series of inputs and it'll produce a certain input, uh, sorry, a certain output for those inputs um, depending on what type of gate it is. So if we have an AND gate, a particular series of inputs will provide a certain output. An OR gate, again, a certain set of inputs will produce a particular output and so on. Now, as I um, mentioned a little bit earlier, logic gates are present in most computer chips. They are primarily constructed from some kind of switching devices. In electronics, they would typically be transistors or um, diodes. And whether it's uh, memory or your central processors or some kind of communication um, systems, for example, multiplexers, registers, or uh, other units for arithmetic operations, they will mainly be constructed of some kind of logic gates. Um, so why do we need logic gates? Well, typically you have some kind of function you want to carry out. For example, there's a couple of them mentioned here, but in your car, if any door is opened in your car, you want a light to come on. So if one door is open, you want the light to come on. If two doors are open, you want the light to come on. If all doors are open, you want the light to come on. But if all doors are closed, you want the light to go off. There's basically a set of conditions there that you want to fulfill or implement using some kind of logic system. And we can use logic gates to construct the system that would basically realize that and make it happen. You can think of something a little bit more complicated. For example, um, the second example here mentions a voting system. So basically we have maybe three people who are voting. They can either vote yes or no. And depending on what they choose, we get a particular output. If two or more people vote yes, the output would be true. If less than two people vote yes, then the output is false. And we could even get more complicated. For example, as I mentioned here, what happens if it's the case that one person has a veto? So we have A, B, and C can vote. They can vote yes or no, but um, the vote will only be carried if um, two out of three people vote yes, and if A is one of those people, because if A maybe has a veto and votes no, then the vote is not carried. So you can see, or you can think of basically a, a set of conditions that need to be fulfilled before some kind of output will be become true. Or the very last example I have there is the rock, paper, scissors game, which we will um, see later on. So how can we deploy this logic? What kind of uh, physical form do these logic gates take? Well, if you only need a small number of gates, you can usually use some off-the-shelf chips to actually realize that. So you've got some kind of thing earlier on, like we mentioned our, um, our car door example, that would require typically a very small number of gates. And we could use some kind of off-the-shelf series of chips, for example, the 7400 series, um, which is a TTL series of gates, or the 4000 series of CMOS gates could be used to actually realize um, a simple circuit. If we have some kind of larger logic, or some kind of logic maybe that's, um, that's changing from time to time, we could use what's called a programmable logic device. Um, for example, there's um, a popular technology called FPGA, which is Field Programmable Gate Array, which basically allows us to um, reproduce or create different types of gate depending on the scenario that we have. So we can actually um, realize different gate types, different logic gate types on a single infrastructure. Now, we have um, various logic gates, and we'll, ex we'll explain in a few minutes what these different types of gates do. But here's um, a couple of circuit symbols you may see when you're looking at gates. So on top we have a, a NOT gate. Um, in, the, in the next row we have what's called an AND gate, and it's inverse, which is called an AND gate. The next row we have an OR gate and an OR gate. And then in the last row we have an XOR or an XNOR. That stands for exclusive OR and exclusive NOR. Now, you can either um, verify the functions of the gates that we'll see in a few minutes by physically building them, or you can actually use a logic simulator. And we're going to look um, in this video at particular, a particular logic simulator, which is called Logisim. Logisim is quite um, interesting because um, it's uh, quite straightforward to use, and it's also free. So whether you have a PC or a Mac or a Linux machine, you can download Logisim and um, use your favorite search engine, find Logisim, download it, and you can try out any of the examples we'll be seeing later on in the course. So the first gate I'm going to look at um, today is um, the AND gate. 
And the AND gate um, allows us to um, basically have an output that is true when all of the inputs are true. Now, what we have on this slide and on the following slides is basically um, a, a set of things. On the top left here, we have the Boolean algebraic expression. So this is the, um, the al algebraic logic expression for the particular gate. On the um, right-hand side here, we have the um, circuit symbol for the gate itself. So you can see a series of inputs here and an output. On the bottom left, we have the rule. This is basically a quick way of remembering what the gate does. And then on the bottom right, we have the true table. And the true table basically lists a series of inputs and what the output will be for those inputs. And you can see here, we've um, inputs A and B, and there's an output X. And remember, we said that Boolean algebra works with um, uh, trues and falses, with ones and zeros, instead of with um, a set of numbers. So um, you can see here, for example, this is basically showing A and B as being 0 or 1. Now remember, a 0 is a false, and a 1 is a true. Um, and then we have x, which is our output, and x is again can be a zero or one. So there's a set of input combinations, and there's a corresponding output combination. If we say a and b are inputs, and x is the output, then a set of inputs um, produces a corresponding set of outputs. And if you look at the rule here, it says when all inputs are true, the output is true. That basically means that the only time when x is going to be true or one is when both of the inputs are true. So x would be one when a and b are both one. Now, we can verify this and we can simulate it using Logisim. So I'm going to load up Logisim now and we're going to have a look and see how that works. This is the screen you'll see when you install Logisim. You basically have a blank canvas and over here you have a number of controls. And for example, you can go into gates here and you can choose an AND gate. This is the one we're looking at. And we just click on that and then we can draw it here on the, on the canvas. Now, an AND gate, the one we've just seen has two inputs, but it could have multiple inputs. It could have more than two but the same basic rule applies. I'm just drawing, dragging a couple of um, uh, input lines and output lines, basically wires connecting into the input of the gate and a wire connecting to the output of the gate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate the uh, inputs and outputs using um, some pins up here. You can see up here on the top, there's a little pin. I'm going to click on that and add it here. And I'm going to click on it again and add a second one here. I think I'll just move this down here just so that there's a bit more space. So you can see here, these are kind of two inputs into our gate. And then at the output, we can observe that using a different type of pin here. So I'm going to click on that and draw it here at the output. Now, we have an AND gate, and this is performing a logical function, which says that if both inputs are true, the output will be true. So if I click on this little hand symbol here, I can basically toggle the um, operation of this gate. So I click on the little hand that allows me to uh, tweak these inputs. I can change, for example, this one to a one. So if I change, um, you can label this, for example. So let's just say I call this one A, I call this one B, and I call this one X. If I toggle this A to a one, you can see X is still a zero. But if I toggle B to a one, you can see X changes to be a one as well. And indeed, you can, you can try all different combinations of that, and you'll basically see that the only time when x is 1 is when both, when both a and b are 1. Now, I mentioned earlier on that you can actually create um, an AND gate with multiple inputs. If I put a third input in here, and I call this um, C, for example, I'm going to add another little pin here and join it up to it. You'll see that the same kind of rule holds. The only time when the output x will be true is when both A and B and C are true. So again, you can see A is 1, B is 1, X is 0. If I toggle C to be a 1, you can now see that X is 1. So again, the same rule holds when all the inputs are true, the output is true. So that's the AND gate. Let's now have a look at another type of gate. This is called an OR gate. And the OR gate has a different rule. By the way, I should point out here that if you look at the Boolean expression for the OR gate and look at the Boolean expression for the AND gate, it's a little bit confusing because the AND gate uses a dot and the OR gate 
uses a plus. So just be aware of that. The AND gate looks like it's uh, almost like multiplication in normal algebra. It's represented by this dot, or sometimes a dot is left out. The OR gate is represented by a plus. So again, we have the Boolean algebraic expression. We have the, um, the circuit symbol shown here. You can see it's kind of this um, um, gate has got curves, a curved input, and curves on top and the bottom. We've got our rule, and then we've got our true table. Now the rule here is a bit different. It says when any input is true, the output is true. You might remember on the previous example, I said when all the inputs are true, the output is true. So for the OR gate, it's different. It's when any input is true, the output is true. And that's reflected here in the true table. You can see um, when B is 1 or A is 1 or both A and B are, are 1, that the output is 1. Now we can go back to Logisim and we can, uh, we can simulate this again. So if I go back here and I take out this gate and I'm just going to uh, replace it with an OR gate. So you can click up here on the top or you can click over here on the gates. Click on the OR gate and then you can put it in place. Now, I'm just going to uh, go back to the case where we've got um, two inputs. So I'll take away C for now. And you can see um, A and B are 1 and the output is 1. So let me toggle off A and B and you can see the impact on X. So if I set B to 0, X stays at 1. If I set A to 0, now X turns off. So the only time when x is going to be 0 or um, um, a false value is when both a and b are, are 0 or false. So again, if I turn on a, you can see x is on. If I turn on b, x stays on. Turn off a, x stays on, and so on. So anytime a or b are 1, um, x would be uh, 1 as well. And as I mentioned earlier on, I can actually add another input in here. It will give you the same kind of idea. Again, anytime that one of the inputs is 1, any input is 1, the output will be 1. So I'll just line that up there. Now we have a case where we've got A, B, and C. And I'm going to turn off A, B, and C. You can see the output is 0. If I turn on C, the output is 1. If I turn on B, the output is 1. If I turn on A, the output is 1. Or any combination where there's a 1 present, basically the output will be 1. And indeed, you can see actually on this R gate, there's room for a couple more pins. This one can actually take five inputs. So I could have A, B, C, D, and E. And as long as any one of those uh, had a value of one, the output would be one as well. So that's the R gate. Now the most simple type of gate is, prob is probably this one. It's called the not gate or an inverter. And basically the value that comes in is inverted. So it's represented by um, the input with a bar over it. So x, the output, is equal to a bar. And this bar denotes um, negation or inversion. So basically, whatever a goes in, the x that comes out is the inverse of that. And it says here, the output is the inverse of the input. So it's a, sh a shorter true table here. We have just two values of a, and we've got two values of x. OK, so let's have a look at the not gate in logism. So you simply click on the inverter, draw it anywhere on the canvas, and you push in an input, and we'll have a look at an output. And again, I'm going to use these little um, input pins here and output pins here to monitor the input and the output. Now, I could also do something else here. You can see here different um, logic systems here on the left-hand side. I'm going to choose an LED, and basically I'm going to turn on an LED um, for a particular input. So you can imagine here's an LED connected to the output. And we've got a little switch of the input, which is going to either turn on the input on or off. So what you can see at the moment is that the LED is on because there's a zero or a false coming in here. If I toggle that to a one, you can see the LED has gone off. Now indeed, I can add just a little pin here to verify that. So I'm just going to do that. So you can see here now, the same output. I'm just going to toggle the input and the output. So the input is 1, the output is 0. The input is 0, the output is 1, which basically turns on this little LED. Now, 
There's also a couple of negative gates, or um, I suppose you could think of them maybe as being a combination of the inverter we've just seen and one of the other gates. If you can think of the AND gate we had earlier on, which says that uh, when all the inputs are true, the output is true, then an AND gate, which is the one shown here, is basically the inverse of that. And the little bubble shown here in the output is almost like having an AND gate with an inverter um, added to the end of it. So the symbol, again, a bit like the inverter, we have our AND expression, but it's got a negation bar uh, or an inversion bar shown here in the Boolean algebraic expression. So again, you could think of it maybe as being like an AND gate in series with an inverter. In fact, I'll try that in Logisim so you can see the, the, the application of that. But basically, um, the rule again is when all the inputs are true, the output is false. So it's the opposite of the AND gate. The AND gate was when all the inputs are true, the output is true. And indeed, you can see that here in the um, true table. When the all, all the inputs are true, the output is false. So let's have a look at this in Logisim. So I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to get a, an AND gate and follow it up with an inverter. I'm just going to join those two together and have a look at the output. And I'll put my pins on here. And we'll have a look at the output over here. And uh, also here on the gates listing, you can also choose an AND, an AND gate directly. So I'll just do the same thing here so we can verify that they're the same thing. Or so you can see that they're the same thing. So you remember the rule. The rule said that when all the inputs are true, the output is false. And indeed, you can see for both these cases here that the output is true already. So anytime um, the inputs are um, not both true, the output will be true as well. So this is the AND gate with an inverter afterwards, and this is the NAND gate. So again, you can think of the little bubble as being representing that inverter folded into the AND. You can see here, this is the rule. When all the inputs are true, um, the output is false. And if I change any of those inputs to be a zero, the output is true. The NOR gate then, similar to the NAND gate, it's the opposite of the, or the inversion of the um, OR gate. So we have A, R, B, and we have this inversion symbol over it. This is the symbol, it's the OR gate symbol, but again with uh, an inversion bubble at the end. And you can see the rule here. When any input is true, the output is false. So we've got, if you look at the output here, we've got one, zero, zero, zero. If you went back to the OR gate, we had earlier on it was zero, one, one, one. So it's actually just the opposite of that. It's one, zero, zero, zero. Again, we can verify that in uh, Logisim. We take our NOR gate, we can draw it here, put in some inputs, and have a look at the output. So as you can see is that when any input is one, the output is zero. When both inputs are one, the output is still zero. Okay, two last gates. This one is called an exclusive OR, or XOR gate. And the XOR gate expression says that when one input is true, the output is true, but not if both inputs are true. Again, it's probably easiest to see from the true table here if either A or B are 1, the output is 1, but not when both A and B are 1. So it's exclusive or it has to be either exclusively B or exclusively A to give you an output of 1. This is the uh, circuit symbol. It's like an OR gate, except there's an extra, um, extra arc here at the input. And this is the Boolean expression, um, which has got A, this plus with a circle around it, times B. So let's have a look at this in the uh, Logisim. I'm going to put in two inputs here. And I'm going to have a look at an output. And again, we can add the enables to these if we want to. 
A and B. And remember the rule that says if A is 1 or B is 1, the output would be equal to 1, but not if both of them are 1. So if A is 1 or B is 1, the output is 1, but not if both are 1. And indeed, if both are a 0, the output is 0. And you can imagine the x nor is basically the inverse of that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to join up the inputs for the x nor up to the xor. So you can basically see this inversion effect going on. So we've got an xor and an x nor. You can see the little bubble on the output representing the negative part. If either a or b are 1, the output of the XOR is 1, but the output of the XOR is 0. So if either A or B are 1, the output of the XOR is 1, the output of the XOR is 0. But if both A and B are 1, then the output of the XOR is 0, and the output of the XOR is 1. So this is an XOR expression we've just seen in its operation. We have A plus with a circle around the B and this negation operator on top. Something else important to note here is the ordering of the inputs. You can see here that in all of these tables we've had a, b going from 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. This is the standard way to draw the um, inputs in a true table. Indeed it corresponds to a sequence of binary numbers which we will see later on. But for now, just assume if you're writing a true table, it should be in the sequence. Starting off with 0, 0, then 0, 1, then 1, 0, and then 1, 1. 